the day he wore my crown. Thank you very much, Elder Dabney, for both item of special music. You should have been here yesterday. This building was packed. Our friends came out, but you were not here to greet them. I had pastors from eight churches, six of them presented words from Jesus. Amen. They brought singers, they brought their members. I did tell you about it, I promoted it. The presentation of the seven wor last words of Christ. We were here from 12 to three and they were all happy. Amen. You should have been here. But because you were not here, they came and they left. It's an act of touching the community, touching our friends. Humbly, I pledge that all those men are now my friends. There was a time when I had no contact with them, but through the ministerial alliance, they all have become my friends. Amen. And what is interesting from infrequently at times, I would go by to their churches. I've been to Dr. Upland Church. I've been to Banks Church. I've been to Waddles Church. I've been to Mount Olivet and Prospect Road. And wherever I go, humbly so, I sit at the back where they would invite me to come front. Two of them even asked me to break the word, <laughs> which I thought was very surprising, but it's a matter of collegiality and friendship. And they would say to me the words, I love you, preacher. And I would respond in kind. They were here. But they were celebrating the crucifixion. You are here today because you're celebrating the resurrection. Tomorrow, one of the preachers says, We'll get him out of the grave. <laughs> they said yesterday they put him in the grave, and tomorrow, which is Sunday, we'll get him out of the grave. That means resurrection morn. But I appeal to you humbly as saints of God, let's make friends. That's the call of Jesus to each one of us. Let many of them are friends of some of us. Let's make friends. Sister Kathy Boyle, Lula sends her hello. Thank you. I remember the name, right? Yes, yeah, she was here and she looked for you. <laughs> and that's what I said to Gloria. I said, you know, the reason why the saints aren't present is because they are remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy and six days shall thou labor. But she says, I have taken the day off. So can some of you. So while I seek to make an excuse for us, God understands. If he delays his coming for one more year, it may not be at Ipsy, but wherever it is, we'll go and fellowship with our friends. surprised. Now today, Brother Savory, how are you? I'm okay. You're sitting next to your lovely wife, and your three daughters have been wonderful as well. Thank you for coming, and God bless you. Would you like to take the mic and let me in ask you some questions about the Ghana conference? Or you prefer your wife, who is the communications director, to answer? <laughs> 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 
Sister Savory, take the mic, please. It is on the internet, and so folks are hearing you and most likely seeing you as well. Just a forewarn, we broadcast live on the internet. So good morning and welcome to the Ypsilanti Seventh Adventist Church. Good morning and thank you. And because it's on the internet, I have to be truthful. I'm no longer the communication director. I actually am residing in the U.S. now. Okay. So. But you can still tell us about the recent happenings in Guyana, can you not? I think so. Recently, Guyana Conference had its conference session. Yes. And the, what's the membership approximate of the Ghana Conference? We wait a minute, wait a minute. Does anyone know the approximate membership of the Lake Region Conference? No, I don't. It's a little over 30,000. So tell us now the membership approximate of the Ghana Conference. We have approximately six to 3,000 members. Amen. Amen. And recently you had a conference session. Yes, that concluded last weekend. And who are the new officers? Our president is now Pastor Exton Clark. Wait a minute. Does anyone here remember Dilly's Cole? And Sister Cole, her mother? Okay, Pastor Clark is married to whom? Um, she is, oh, the name? Adele. Adele. Adele Cole Clark. That's Dilly's sister. So Dilly's sister is now the first lady of Guyana. <laughs> okay. And um, over the past session period, which was it a quadrennium or a quinquennium? Quadrennium. How many new members were baptized into that conference? That I can't recall. Okay. All right. But a lot. A lot. Quite a lot. A lot. A lot. I would say at least 6,500. Amen. I've decided to do that to encourage us. My, my goal is to encourage us that if those folks in the Caribbean, and Guyana is a Caribbean culture, but geographically it's in South America, and your humble servant is from Guyana. Amen. That's why. And there are other pastoral colleagues who are also from Guyana. My neighbor in the adjoining district, do you know Pastor Liverpool? Yeah. He's also from Guyana. And do you know, what, what's your son's name? Christopher Boyle. Do you know Christopher Boyle? Where is his wife from? <laughs> Sister Kathy wants me to say that. <laughs> so, were you there last weekend? No, no. Okay. I wasn't. But I heard they had a grand celebration at the Sophia Park. They did. Right. Mm -hmm. And while you reside in Guyana, who are your immediate family once again? You, 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 your husband told us, but who brought you to Michigan? My sister, Julie. Amen. And Julie is, Julie. your sister, Julie, is my daughter. Yes, <laughs> Julie, Julie Patterson. All right. <laughs> okay, Brother Savory, tell us about yourself a little. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Okay, I attended the church at Pleasance. Mm -hmm. I, well, I'm telling you things in relation to church life. Yes. Yeah, I was there for several years. I once served as an elder uh -huh. and a few other offices. Okay. Uh, when I, when we left, maybe just two months ago, I was an elder of the church. All right. And how large is your church? Uh, in terms of physical size or no, no, membership? membership. <laughs> uh, 
approximately on, on regular basis, like just over 100 regular. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, you're doing baptism every year, I guess. Yeah, but not necessarily on, on a large scale. Sometimes it's true one-to-one -one evangelism. Yes. Sometimes it's, it's um, otherwise. But we haven't had like what we call a crusade. Right. Will it be a cre recently? Last year and the year before. Yeah, I, I, if my memory serves me right, I think last we had like 20 something baptism. Okay. Right? And that's what I could remember. Well, God bless you and thank, thank you. you. Thank you both for coming to church. There is someone over here who stood as a visitor. Yes. Did you tell us your name? I did. Yes. I don't remember. Tess. Again? Tess. 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 T-A-S-S? T-E-S-S. -S. -E -S -S. Oh, Tess. Yes. Okay. And what brought you to Ypsilanti? You want me to say that on public television? As much as you can say. It all starts and ends with a man. Okay, and that's, that's a good thing. Because we're studying families today and, and for the whole rest of the quarter. And I trust that we shall see you as often as possible here. The best place to be is at Ypsilanti, and the best place in Ypsilanti is at the Seventh-day Adventist Church. God bless you. My time is far spent, and so we're going to leave here about 10 to 2. If I preach the full sermon, I can get you out at 1 o'clock by simply saying, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, amen. amen. Let us pray. Merciful God and Father, we love you because you first loved us. We thank you, O oh God, for calling us to be servants in your vineyard, calling us to be saints while we are still sinners, all made possible through the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we open your word, O oh God, May the written word come alive in every heart. And may your name be praised through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A part of our modern culture is to receive, mark the date before you get the actual invitation. You know what I'm talking about? They will send you a card long in advance to say, invitation coming soon, but mark the date which implies that some birthday or some wedding anniversary or maybe a wedding is coming forth. So you, you get a notice in advance because the real notice is coming with all the other information. But just mark the date. Mark me out. Well, in our scripture reading today, Jesus said, mark the date. But you won't find it directly from 1 Corinthians 15. You will find it elsewhere. And we're speaking about Resurrection Plus. The reason being is that we are endeavoring to answer the question, what did Jesus do during the 40 days that he was on earth? He was raised. We all know that. We all believe that. But what else did he do? Did he just walk around with his immortal body, go to Jerusalem, go to Galilee, go here or there. What did Jesus do? Brother Guy, what did you think Jesus did? Give encouragement to reveal to all that he was the Savior. Well, the, the Bible says, according to our scripture reading, verse 5, that he was seen of Cephas, 
that's Peter, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto the present, but some are fallen asleep. And he continued to appear to James, the brother of Je his brother, then to all the apostles. And at last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Paul actually was not giving a chronology of the scene or appearance of Jesus, because when you put here a little, there a little, Jesus appeared even more than that to the disciples and to some women, Mary and others. So what was he doing? If you have your Bibles, which you should never leave home without it. Matthew 26 and verse 32. That is the pre-invitation to something special. Some of us attach great significance to invitations. The color of the paper, the texture, whether it has a bow or ribbons, the, the font size, the print, all of that there is associated with an invitation. And we address significance to the invitation according to who sends it as well. So here is Jesus in Matthew 26 and verse 32. I will go before you where? So he forewarned them before he died that he's going to go with them into Galilee. If someone of ordinary stature gives you a handbill, you look at it and you may say, that's not necessary for me to go. But if someone is your friend, your immediate associate, Someone is your boss, someone is your daddy, someone is your mommy, someone that is your significant other gives you an invitation, you take it to heart. Here is a case where Jesus says, the context, he's going to die. But even in that context, Jesus is prophesying being alive. And I will go before you into Galilee. I would attach great significance to that invitation. Why does Jesus want to go and tell me and to tell us that he's going to meet us in Galilee after he died? Very quickly, not only that he's going to die, but he, in order to meet us there, he has to be resurrected. So he was prophesying his resurrection and that he had something special to say to them when they meet in Galilee. I looked at this from the Spirit of Prophecy, and Ellen White, in Desire of Ages, chapter 85, Go Teach All Nations, says the commission had been given to the Twelve when Christ met with them in the upper chamber, that's one, but it was now to be given to a larger number. At the meeting on a mountain in Galilee, all the believers who could be called together were assembled. In our scripture reading, the Bible says that Paul recounting that Jesus met with a group of above 500. And you want to know when and where did they meet? Ellen White says, Jesus gave them specific invitation of which mountain to meet in, what time to meet there, and how to get there without being noticed by the Pharisees and scribes. So when Paul is recounting meeting with 500 disciples or 500 brethren, it was on this occasion. And she says, of this meeting, Christ himself, before his death, had designated the time and the place. That's an invitation. Not that I'm going to meet with you in Ypsilanti, 
But I'm going to meet with you at 402 South Adams, Ypsilanti, zip code 148197. Thank you. And every Sabbath or every Friday or every Thursday or every day of the week besides the Sabbath, Christ is saying to each one of us, take note of the time, Sister Pat, that Sabbath school begins at what time? All right. So may it be heard loud and clear. Jesus, in context of today, is saying to all the saints of Ypsilanti Seventh Adventist Church and all the people in the community that he wants to meet with us every Sabbath day at 9.15 at 402 South Adams Ypsilanti 48197. Because he has something special to say to us. It's an invitation not just from another man or woman. It may be through a man or a woman, but it is Jesus who sends the invitation. And she goes on to say, the promise was repeated to the believers who were gathered at Jerusalem during the Passover week. And through them, it reached many lonely ones who were mourning the death of their Lord. With intense interest, I'm continuing to read from these averages. All look forward to the interview, she calls it. They made their way to the place of meeting by circuitous routes, coming in from every direction to avoid exciting the suspicion of, and jealousy of the Jews. With wandering hearts, they came talking earnestly together of the news that had reached them concerning Christ. And so, bringing it home, Christ did meet with them. But again, as an invitation to the saints to meet with them every Sabbath day at 9.15, what do you think happened before Christ came? Sabbath school began, and the disciples we're moving among the crowd. I just love what I read from Ellie White. She says, at the appointed time, about 500. So Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, speaking about 500, was speaking about this occasion. And she says, about 500 believers were collected in little knots on the mountainside. And Jesus loved to meet the saints on the mountainside. I believe that a lot of people were there, for the Bible does declare that he did most of his miracles and most of his preaching in Galilee. It was in Cana of Galilee that he turned water into wine. It was at Capernaum that he called many of his disciples. That's why they were addressed as ye men of Galilee. It was in Galilee that he fed the thousands with the loaves and fishes. And so I believe that little lad again may have heard not only that Jesus Christ was crucified, but that, did you remember the date? He said he's going to meet with us at a specific time and a specific place. Mother, I need five more loaves, and I need two more fishes. I'm going to be with Jesus. Amen. Excitement was in the air. And word, was, word of mouth was going like wildfire, and people were hearing it all around. And word of mouth tells them exactly where Jesus would meet with them. Ellen White says, as I continue to read, she says, from group to group, the disciples passed, telling all that they had seen and heard of Jesus and reasoning from the scripture as he had done with them. What was that? They had scripture study or Bible study and the disciples were moving from group to group. That was Sabbath school, Elder Martin. They were studying the Bible. Jesus had not yet come on. But the disciples were moving from group to group, different Sabbath school classes. And they were studying about the family. And they were studying about the challenges of family life. But on this occasion, they were studying resurrection. And they were studying the scriptures that lead to the resurrection. And Jesus was about to arrive. 
It says this about it. Let me reread that part. And reasoning from the scriptures as he had done with them. Thomas recounted the story of his unbelief and told how his doubts had been recounted, the story of his unbelief, and told, sorry, how his doubts had been swept away. And while they were at Sabbath school, going through the scriptures, studying the word of God, ensuring that according to the scriptures, he's got to be arisen. Ellen White says, these are of ages. Suddenly, Jesus stood among them. Amen. Suddenly, Jesus was ready to reveal himself to over 5,000 brethren at one time. That is resurrection plus. For according to 1 Corinthians, he appeared to Cephas. He appeared to the eleven. He appeared to the woman, and we know that he appeared to some others, but here he appeared to over 500 at one time. And what was so significant about it is what he wanted to say. What he wanted to say. Before we get at what he said, let's look at the book of Matthew. Matthew, the 28th chapter. And we're going to look at some verses before what Jesus actually said. And then we shall conclude. I have paraphrased and point two of the sermon to be delivered at, at another time. Amen? Amen? So Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, the 28th chapter. And let's look at verse 7. As a matter of fact, let's look from verse 6 and 7. He's not here. He's risen. That's resurrection. As he said, come see the place where the Lord laid. And do what in verse 7? And do what? That what? All of that is important. And behold what? All right, so the angel knew that there was supposed to be a meeting in Galilee. Jesus prophesied that he's going to meet with them in Galilee. And the angel is saying, he's go before you into Galilee. So something significant is about to take place in Galilee. Something of real importance. Otherwise, the angels would not have repeated it. You got an invitation to the wedding. That's good enough. But man, you cannot not go to that wedding. It's the wedding of the century. So when you talk again about what you're doing and about, what are the names? Harry and, what is Harry's wife's name? Megan. When you're talking about Harry and Megan, you say, can I be there? Or somebody mentions the name Harry and says, you've got to be there. So it is. The invitation went out. But as people spoke about it, you've got to be there. That's verse 7. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring the news to the disciples. Let's skip to verse 10. Let's read that together. And know the significance again of why it's repeated. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren to do what? And there... All right, so something about Galilee. If you hear the reminder three times, you would associate that, look, this is not just a passing incident. Something significant is about to take place. All right, so let's look at verse 16. Obedience is in place. They talked and talked, and they gathered themselves together. And what does verse 16 say? Into a mount where Jesus had appointed them. So Ellen White concurs. She says, he did not only tell them of the place in the mountain, but of the time. And we read in the Zarvages where 
over 500 people were gathered. And they were studying the scriptures. And the disciples was going from group to group, encouraging them. And so must our elders do in these times. When times are hard and their disappointment, encourage the saints in the Lord. Encourage them in the scriptures. Encourage them in the word. And so we come to verse 16. Verse 17 says what? Okay, something began to happen. Underscore the word worship. So, recapping, Jesus says, look, I'm going to die. But just don't be discouraged. I'm going to meet with you guys in Galilee, which means that even though I die, I'll rise again. And when I meet with you in Galilee, it's going to be special. The angels knew about it, so that when Mary went to the tomb, she said, the angel reminded her, go tell them to meet with him. He's not here, he's risen. Go tell them to meet him in Galilee. Jesus himself said to her, tell them to meet with me in Galilee. Remind them to meet with me in Galilee. Brother Guy, if you heard that so often, this thing is going to be at Ypsilanti Seven Avenue Church. It's going to be at Ypsilanti Seven Avenue Church. It's going to be, if you hear of it incidentally, it become important. I just want to be there. Amen. I just want to hear what Jesus is going to do or say. I need to be there, and I'm going to make the preparation to be there. That is why I took the spiritual initiative to say that young man with the loaves and fishes had to be there. Those who were healed had to be there. Those who were brokenhearted that were mended had to be there. And so it is, brethren. If Jesus says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, and he repeated it over and over, it's significant because he is going to be there. Yes, and I want to be there with him, amen? amen? So Jesus appeared. And according to the Bible, he preached the longest sermon or the shortest sermon, depending upon how you take it, in terms of depth of meaning, the longest sermon, because that sermon is still operating in our hearts and minds from the time it was uttered even to now and to the end of time. What did this sermon begin with? All, all, all dunamis is given unto me in heaven and in earth. What is the next one? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And this is the bombshell. Lo, I am with you always. Brother Martin, is with us today. Amen. Sister Cathy is with us today. Sister Harriet, is he with us today? You better believe it. Brother Guy, is he with you today? Amen. Sister Alexis, is he with you today? Sister Shaw, Brother Sudler, God is here. Lo, I am with you always. So if the preamble to the invitation was set the date. During the invitation, we've been reminded over and over, he goes to Galilee. And then over 500 people were gathered. Significant one. Some people think that Jesus gave the invitation only to 11 disciples. But how many people were there? Over 500. And I believe not only men were there, but women. And I believe that children were there. Amen. So when Jesus gave the commission, he did not give it to only 11 disciples. He gave it to over 500 people. Yes. 
boys and girls, men and women, all power is given unto me, Jesus says. And he wanted them to remind it. So this is the interview. Remember, all power is given unto me and I am with you all the way. So whatever I ask of you to do, do it with your passion, do it with your might, do it, with, do it quickly. Just go and do it because I am with you always. I told you before I died that I'll come to Galilee. I died and you were disappointed, but I'm resurrected now. And resurrection plus means that I'm with you all the way. Amen. All the way. Amen. All the way. Amen. With all the powers of heaven, I am with you all the way. Have no fear. Have no doubt. Have no question. I am with you all the way. And that's why when Jesus was about to take up, the angels said to the disciples in Acts chapter 1 and verse 11, my final text, Ye men of Galilee, continue it for me please. Acts chapter 1 and verse 11, that's the final text. What happened? Why they, sh why they shouldn't gaze? Because who is taken up from will do what? Amen. So I am with you all the way even to the end of the world. And even after that, I will come again. Let not your hearts be troubled. Let it not be afraid. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And during your pilgrimage on earth, from now on to that time, I am with you always through the comforter, through the paracletos, through another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit of God. And so God is here today. God is on the airways. And he's giving, no matter what comes your way, no matter what comes your path, he is with you all the way. I'm so glad that Jesus has kept his word all these years. That regardless of what comes my way, he is there. And I can put all my trust in him. I can present my body as a living sacrifice on the word. He is with me. The Lord give it. The Lord take it. Blessed be his name. He is with me. The Lord allows sickness to come my path. He is with me. The Lord allows accident to come my path. He is with me. All the way, the Lord allows failure to come to me through my schoolwork. He is with me. Whatever the challenge, whatever the hindrance, he is with me. And finally, finally, he will take me home to be with him forever. Amen. Rejoice in the fact, Ypsilanti, that he did not only rise from the grave. It's not only a resurrection, but there is also a commission to go into all the world, teach, preach, and baptize. And when you do that, Jesus will come and take us home. Rejoice in that fact. Amen, everybody. God bless you. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer as we prepare for our closing song. Father in heaven, we recognize that in our human occurrences of life, we receive invitations and we attach significance to them according to how they're presented. Oh God, in your word, you did invite the disciples to meet with you in Galilee. The angels reminded them to tell Peter and others to meet him in Galilee. Jesus himself reminded Mary to tell the disciples to meet with him in Galilee. It was significant, it was important. And on that occasion, all that we read is your declaration of the Gospel Commission and your promise to be with us all the way. Father, though few in numbers today, you are with us. Others who have gone to the Oakwood occasion, 
you are with them. Others who have gone elsewhere, you are with them. Be with your saints everywhere. Keep us faithful to the end, to believe that come what may, you are with us, and you will keep us into your divine care until you come again. Bless us to this end, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>